Hello world! Today I'll be expanding on my previous video, which you can click here, where I used the Python Deep Translator to do some basic um, tr language translations. And so in this video, I'm going to take it a step further and use OpenCV and PyTesseract to read the text of a picture and then translate it. Now you can do this with the Deep Translator library, um, read it from a file. But eventually what I want to do is live um, recording or, you know, live webcam translation into a microphone. So if I read something, it'll read it into my ear. And so we're going to do that step by step. And so what we're going to do is look at uh, a picture real quick. And it looks like this. Um, just has my name, some numbers, and then subscribe to my channel, which is just some random text. Uh, but please subscribe to my channel and then we're going to uh, read that and uh, we're going to run this program real quick and then it's going to open up the picture it's going to detect the text as whole words instead of just the individual letters and then it's going to above it write the words okay so it has drawn a line around the the whole text and not just the individual letters. It found the letters as well and then it found the um, words underneath it. Okay, so let's try another picture that's in Spanish and do the same thing. So now we're going to check this one. It says, Hola, buenas noches. So um, let's read that. Now it's going to read that, but instead of just finding it, it's going to translate it as well. So, hello, good night. Now, unfortunately, it's reading the words individually, so it doesn't realize if it read this together, it would just say good night. But that is how you uh, say good night in Spanish is the plural, buenas noches. All right, so now let's check the code on how we did it. But first, welcome to my welcome to the 165th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Um, please consider subscribing to my channel, like the first translation, and continue watching me build um, my digital assistant or OpenCV projects, robotics, 3D printing, etc. All right, so now let's really check out the code. So one quick note is the majority of this code, if you want a detailed description, is from, um, you know, I found this on a lot of uh, tutorials for OpenCV text detection, but one of my favorite is from Merzada's AI workshop, Robotics and Workshop, which you can uh, watch the video here, and I'll leave a link in the description to his channel. He's probably my favorite OpenCV channel, just the way he um, clearly explains everything. So that's not how my channel is, but we will go through the code. So first we're going to import cv2, open cv-python, um, import deep translator dot exceptions because uh, we're going to catch an error later on. Again, watch my previous video for the deep translator discussion. We're going to import pytesseract um, watch Merzada's video when he describes how to best uh, install PyTesseract. It's more than just a pip install. Then from Deep Translator, we're going to import Google Translator and Single Detection. And then this confuses everybody who's new to my channel. And that is um, this keys file. So the Detecting Languages API requires a key. And since I have a YouTube channel, I don't... Um, explicitly use the API so don't copy and paste this if you're watching my video so um, I'll show you where to put the actual API as a string so then we're going to do pytesseract dot pytesseract dot tesseract underscore command equals and then we're going to read this file now again um, watch Merzada's video if you want to see how to download the tesseract um, it's the optical reader. 
Then we're going to create an image equals cv2.imread, so image read, and then you pass in a string the name of the file. So since I have it in this project folder right here, um, let me scroll down so you can see. So um, Spanish text recognition, then I don't need to put the full path. If you have it anywhere else, like on your desktop, you will have to put the full path, and that's like this, um, et cetera, et cetera. But if you have it in your PyCharm projects folder, you can just call it out like this. And one of the cool things about PyCharm is it finds everything for you. So let's say uh, Spanish, and there it goes. It found it already. Then we're going to change it into an image equals cv2.cvt color. And then image, we're going to pass it the image, which is right here. And then we're going to change it to um, BGR to RGB. And then we're going to draw boxes. So boxes equals pytesseract.image to data. And then we're going to pass it this image too. And then since we're going to be drawing squares around it, um, we're going to get the height of the image, the width of the image, and this image.shape is uh, three variables. So if you're not uh, familiar with Python, if you don't need a variable, uh, you know you're not going to use it, you just do an underscore or an, um, yeah, an underline right here. And what that does is, um, it makes it where this, if you say equals this, it's expecting three variables. And so by doing this, you capture that third variable knowing that you're not going to use it. Um, and then we're going to do a for loop. So for x and b in enumerate box. So we're going to enumerate around this boxes, boxes dot split lines and call it. And so, um, we don't want the first line on there. So if x does not equal zero, right? And so you can see what that looks like. So let's say if we want to uh, clear this all out. Uh, and, and Merzada goes through step by step if you want to watch it. But um, if you just want to see what boxes look like, let's check that out. So here's all this stuff right here. So these are the columns right here. And so this is zero, the zero width index. And then one, two, three, four, and then here's the actual lines that it's reading. So what we're asking this to do is saying um, for X and B in enumerate through the boxes, right? Every single thing that it finds is a box. Um, we're going to split the line. So this is separate than this right here. So this is a blank space, blank space, blank space. Then hola, blank space, blank space, blank space. Buenas noches. All right. So that's what boxes looks like right now. And uh, let's keep that. Let's just comment it out. So what we're going to do. So if x does not equal zero, so this first thing right here. So basically we're saying if it's not this header, then we're going to go b equals b dot split. And the reason why we split that is so each of these numbers are its own um, position in it. So let me just print this out and show you what that looks like. So there we go. Now we have um, basically a list for each one. And so this is the zero with index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 items in this one. But when there's an actual word in there, we have 11. Right? So what we're saying, um, and so when, when you're doing the length of something, it starts with one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So anything with a word has 12 items in this list, right? And that's important to note because in the very next, because we don't want to show the blank lines because PyTesseract will show you the blank lines. So if the length of B, 
So it's going to iterate through each line equals 12 equals equals 12. So that's anything that has a word in it, right? It found, oh, the PyTesseract found these words. Then we're going to get the X, Y, W, and H. Now these are just variables we created. It can be anything. So what we're going to say is we want the integer, because right now these are strings, right? Because we split. So this is a string right now. We want the sixth item in here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm sorry, since we're talking about the index, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna get the X coordinate. The seventh index is this one, Y, and then so on. This is the eighth and this is the ninth. So what we're doing is we're getting the X and Y and the width and height of each of these words. Then we're gonna use CV2.rectangle. We're gonna draw it on the image. Um, we're going to start at the X and Y, and then we're going to do the width plus X, right? So the X is the farthest top left, I believe. And so we want the box to start at X and go all the way to uh, the width plus X. And then we want to take Y, which I believe is the lower right, the bottom right. So we want the height plus the um, lower right. So we're drawing a box. We're gonna color it red. And then we'll do a one, a size one pixel um, for it. And then the text is just gonna be B11. So that's all the way here, which is B11. So, and the reason why we want that is next, and watch my previous video um, that I put a card in in the beginning. We're going to try to get the language, right? We're going to try to figure out the language. So language, so lang equals single detection. We're going to read this text, which is this. And then the API key is my detect languages API. That is where I get from my keys file. Um, don't copy and paste that. What you do, if you followed my last video, is you copy and paste your key here. And I explained that in... Um, my previous video. So we're going to try that. So what happens is if it's already in English, right, it's going to give you an index error. So if we get that index error, we're going to do cv2.put text and we're just going to draw the text up here. So this hola buenas noches, if it's in English. If it's in Spanish, this try loop is going to be successful and you're going to have um, Spanish in this variable right here and then we're going to try to translate it so translated text equals Google Translator the source which is the source language equals the language that it found the target is English dot translate we're going to translate this the text right b11 and then we're going to put that text using and all we're going to do is find the x and y and put it on top of it so this is, um, don't know why I switched colors. And then we're using a, uh, two, a two font. That's why it was so big. So if it's already in English, so basically what uh, the Google Translator can't do is if the source is English and your target is English, it's gonna throw this error. So, so if you get this error, deep translator.exceptions, which is why we imported this right here, dot invalid source or target language, then we just want to draw the text, right? Because it's already in English. So in my first example, it's going to read this and it's going to say, hey, the language is in um, English. So we're not, what are we translating? And it's going to throw this index error. So, or it's going to go here and uh, say, it's going to try this this one, so hey, it's gonna try this and it's gonna say, hey, this was Spanish. So this worked right here and it found Spanish. Then it's going to Google Translate it and then it's gonna draw it. If it's already in English, it's gonna um, come here and just draw the text. So these kind of do the same thing. They're just two different errors at two different stages. If you don't wanna see the image and you just want um, to print, the text, you can do that too by printing um, something like this here. P 
print text if you just want to see it like that. But we want to cv2.im show, so our image show. This right here result is just what's in the upper left. Then we're going to pass it the image, which has this rectangle now on it, this, this text and this rectangle on there. And then the wait key just means it's going to keep the picture up forever until we stop the program. So there you go. I went through the code. Now let's check it out one more time. There you go. So now it has found the text. We drew the rectangle around it. We drew the uh, hello, the text. This is the translated text using the deep translator. Uh, same here. And now we're going to exit the program. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you did. Leave a comment if there's a better way to do this. Um, again, I know Deep Translator uses has a save to file function, but the next progression of this is not to do the image of CV2, but actually to use our webcam. So we can, um, in our heads up display that we're building on my channel, we can see a foreign language and translate it. And what I'm probably not going to do is show the image, but what I'm going to use is speech to text. I'm sorry, text to speech. And then as I'm reading something, it will go into some sort of uh, audio output. So again, subscribe to my channel so you can watch me build all this. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.